how to get started with WordPress. Now, WordPress may seem a little bit confusing to you right now, and if that is the case, if you are unsure, then you're definitely in the right spot. Here, what we'll do is we'll get you started, we'll get you off on the right foot so that you aren't making unnecessary and sadly all too common mistakes with WordPress. If that sounds like a plan, my friend, then let's get rolling. Here's how to get started with WordPress. How are things going? It's great to see you. My name is Jeff from 10tononline.com. Here, it's all about escaping the grind, building a fulfilling online business, and launching a better tomorrow. Now, to help you along with not only WordPress and building your website, but also larger online business ambitions that you may have if you've ever had an idea for an online business, then to help you along, I've put together for you an online business jumpstart guide. This is an easy to follow, completely free, printable PDF guide that gives you a solid blueprint to follow as you're building out your business, your online business, your website, your marketing efforts, and your product and service ideas. I've packed it with powerful action steps that you can take and loaded it up with valuable tools and resources for you. So go grab it right now while you can over at 10 tononlinecom forward slash jump. All right. Now, since you're here, likely you're struggling a little bit with WordPress to try and understand it, to try and understand where you should start with it. So here's probably the best way to start. Probably the best place to start is right here, understanding that WordPress is a platform. So in other words, it's simultaneously your website builder and also your website. So your WordPress website is going to have a public facing, let's call it a front end and a rear facing admin area. This is pretty common these days. There's a lot of website builders and platforms that behave this way. So hopefully this isn't anything too terribly new for you. I kind of think of it as like a storefront and then a back room or maybe like a theater production where there's the stage and then there's the backstage area. So visitors coming to your website are only going to see the front end or the stage if you want to think of it like that. So just so we're clear, WordPress is not software that you run on your computer or anything like that. That's kind of an old school way of building websites. Instead, WordPress runs on your web hosting account. In other words, WordPress is your website. Next, and this kind of gets a little bit confusing, so we're going to untangle all this. It's important for you to know that there are differences between the various flavors of WordPress specifically, and you might want to jot this down. There's a hosted version of WordPress and there is a self-hosted version of WordPress. Again, it gets confusing. Let's untangle it. The hosted version of WordPress is called WordPress.com. The self-hosted version of WordPress is called WordPress.org. Again, it's confusing. Why couldn't they give them like completely different names? <laughs> anyway, here's the deal. Let's start with WordPress.com. So WordPress.com, again, is the hosted version of WordPress. This means that the WordPress service will host your website for you. That's why it's called the hosted version right? Now, if you want to go this route, I mean, it's entirely up to you. However, there are some limitations here. For instance, you'll have what's called a branded domain name or URL. So your URL to get to your website would be something like wordpress.com forward slash your username. There's other limitations too. Last time I checked, ads would run on your website. There were other limitations, the number of pages you could have and this sort of stuff. And of course, as you might expect you can remove these limitations if you pay a monthly membership fee. Now, the other flavor of WordPress, of course, is WordPress.org. This is the self-hosted version of WordPress. Why do they call it the self-hosted version of WordPress? Well, here with this version of WordPress, you would host the installation of WordPress yourself. Now, that might seem kind of technical, but basically what you would do is you would sign up with some hosting through a web hosting provider and install WordPress there. And the process to actually install WordPress is dead easy. In fact, many, many web hosting companies have what are called one-click WordPress installers. And I've got to say, my friend, this is the much, much better version of WordPress. This is the version of WordPress that I always recommend. It is much more flexible and much more powerful for you. Now, there are two key areas of WordPress that you got to know about before you go any further 
to really get clear on exactly how all this works. First though, if you wanna take the next big steps forward and really get a handle on what you need to build your website, specifically an online business website, then you've gotta check out a free business website masterclass that I've put together for you. You can enroll in this free masterclass over at 10tononline.com forward slash web. This is a totally self-paced online workshop where you and I are gonna crush the biggest myths about web design and running and building your online business. I'll show you how to avoid the biggest mistakes, the biggest pitfalls, the nastiest snake pits that most business newbies make, and you'll get a set of clear, straightforward steps to follow. I'll show you the best tools, the best services, and the best platforms to build your website, even if you've never built anything like this before. Grab a coffee, bring a notepad, you don't want to miss it. Next though, once you have WordPress installed in your hosting account, what you'll do is you'll log into that backend, that backend admin or control area, control panel, whatever you want to call it. It's here where you would build your website. It's here where you would create the pages that you want to include on your website. Or maybe you decide to run a blog. It's here where you would create your blog posts, customize your website, install plugins, and so on. All of that's happening, again, like I say, in this backstage area, this admin area, control panel, whatever you want to call it. But there's two key areas of the WordPress backend that you gotta know about. The first one is something called themes, WordPress themes. Do you know about WordPress themes? If not, WordPress themes control the design, that is the look and feel, the layout of your website. Now, there are many, many free themes for you to choose from, hundreds of thousands as a matter of fact. You can also go with premium or paid themes as well. Or if you really want, you can build a custom theme for yourself or hire someone to build one for you. That's the first area of the WordPress backend. Here's the second area that you gotta know about. Plugins, WordPress plugins. Do you know about plugins? Essentially what plugins do is they extend the capability, the behavior of your website. Now, let's say for instance, you wanted to run an e-commerce website. Well, you could install shopping cart plugins if you wanted to, or maybe you want to have a membership area. There's plugins for that too. Contact forms, image carousels. I mean, anything you could possibly think of, someone else has already thought of it and built a plugin for it practically. Once again, there are many, many free plugins. There are some paid plugins as well. So my friend, there you go. There's the gist. There's how to get started with WordPress. Now next, let's really get moving with all this stuff in your business website masterclass over at 10tononline.com forward slash web. Bring that notepad, bring that coffee. I'll see you there next.